Yeah, great to be here. So my name is Aaron Kleinerman. I've been working in this field of human behavior, um, helping people in the forms of relationships, attracting healthy relationships with themselves, with others for yeah, the last 15 years. Welcome, Soul Family. Um, we are going to present this very exciting topic, how to be irresistibly magnetic to high quality people and attract your ideal match within 90 days. I'm excited for everyone who's here that can learn and grow from what you have to teach. It's amazing stuff. Being magnetic just transforms so many areas of your life. Luba and Aaron will tell you much more about it, but this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart and has radically changed my life. And I've seen it change the lives of many, many people. Women are going to learn how to cut through competition for that attractive, successful, emotionally available man. And uh, some women right now might be even wondering, do those men really exist? Aaron, what, what's your opinion on that? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Women will also learn how to turn on your gorgeous feminine radiance, no matter mm -hmm. your age, your weight, or how you look right now, because truly the radiance comes from inside. It comes from inspiration, it comes from spirit, it comes from magnetism. You're going to learn that today. You're going to learn the three traits that make an evolved man decide if you can be a true life partner. So he courts you and commits to you in the way you deserve. You will also learn how to glow on the first date in a way that makes a man feel entraptured by your presence, inviting you to more dates. So if you had an issue with second, getting second date, this is going to be real gold for you. You will also learn the way to relax and unleash your feminine magnetism, activating his desire to basically go after you and court you. Mm -hmm. And you will learn how to make commitment a natural, easy thing for a man so that transitioning to exclusivity and partnership just happens without worry or effort. And nowadays, it is just so important to know how to navigate that space. All right. So this is just some of the clients uh, that found love and not just love, but really, really extraordinary relationships and also receive tools how to make those relationships better and better every day and how to really enjoy each other so now we come to a slightly more formal part who are we and why you can trust us we're just going to fly through that and uh many of you already know who i am and but but i would like to introduce you more to Aaron. so as a coach i through my courses uh direct in-person retreats workshops and um various seminars and online courses. I've helped more than 3,000 people to get into the best relationship of their lives. I am also an international speaker and I'm a presenter at Harvard University on the subject. I've consulted various uh, public, what? Public and private clients like United Nations, Smithsonian and, uh, and CNN. And um, I share a stage with some incredible people like Susan Somers, Marion Williamson, and Jack Kentel, who actually was one of my coaches. You might know him as the author of the book, uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul, but some people know that he's one of the most powerful coaches on the planet. So it's been 20 years for me of empowering people, more than 350 in-person retreats and events. And I also want to tell you that our clients, people we work with, include stars. They include artists, CEOs, founders of um, different companies, master coaches, psychotherapists. Uh, we have a woman now in our program whose direct boss is the president of the United States. We had superior judges. We had some faculty from really, really um, prominent institutions like Esalen Institute in California. So this work really is appreciated by people who tried everything and uh, that did not work for them. So sometimes I'm known as the last coach that you're going to need and, and we're definitely really, really standing behind our students and clients and fighting for their success. So I've been teaching and working in this field of human behavior, psychology for the last 15 years. I have a master's degree in spiritual psychology. My background before working in this field was in a maritime military context. So I'm, I'm a pretty straight shooter. And it's really when I merged into this field of, you could say, relationships and, and tantra and meeting 
the, the the real essence of the human experience. So yeah, and I have of course personally seen um, how Aaron magnetizes so, so many people in different <laughs> events. It's 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 a very very uh, easy for him. Okay, you are going to be getting a gift, thirteen text messages, which uh, will help you communicate in a magnetic way. So again, stick till the end of the webinar and you're going to get your wonderful gift. Okay, magnetism blockers. So let's go through that. And uh, what uh, we are going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about each blocker. And then I am going to ask Aaron to also comment. So if somebody has an immediate question, you can raise your hand and Dashira, our helper is going to reach out to you personally and she's going to get your question. All right, so the first blocker to magnetism is undeserving mind when you don't feel that you deserve to be loved. That is based on what we call the love blueprint, which needs to be healed. Love blueprint is your relationship with love itself. So as you were growing up, possibly, you did not get exactly the love that you needed from your parents. Usually it comes from that period of life. And possibly your parent was absent or unstable or very critical or emotionally unavailable, or maybe like really strangling you with love that you kind of like did not want. And so what happens then is that we start to associate love with pain. And when there is this association of love and pain that becomes deeply imprinted on our subconscious mind, that subconscious mind tends to seek out the same in the world. So you would be attracting people who are basically going to hurt you in different ways uh, when your love blueprint has that kind of energy of entanglement of love and pain. Aaron, would you like to add anything on, on this subject? Yeah, you know, what, what happens on a bioelectric magnetic level inside of our DNA is that we're actually we're attracting and seeking the partners that are trying to support us to remember the love that we really are. But the blueprint that Luba is speaking into is the feeling that I'm sure many of you have had of continually attracting a very similar partner just with a different name. And then you're hitting your head against the same brick wall and you're like, why is this happening to me again? And why is this there? And so part of the piece of clearing through is rewiring uh, that blueprint at a young age so that your magnetism is actually then attracting that which you are stepping into, not as much as there's always going to be levels of healing, but not as much as the deep repressed healing of the things that you didn't move through at a young child, as a young child. So really the blueprint as you begin to shift and reorient it into your day-to-day -day life, then you as a being become over, uh, extremely magnetic in attracting more and more of what your ideal scenes and visions are drawn you towards. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Aaron, for, men for also mentioning the uh, newer aspect of that. That really re requires deep rewiring, which means working deeply with subconscious mind, which is exactly what we do. I also want to say that um, you cannot attract what you think you do not deserve. So mm -hmm. deserving mind is very, very important. Number two, what is blocking the magnetism is your repressed masculine or feminine energy. And what's interesting is that it works for men and women. So Aaron, do, would you like to... Uh, speak about that yeah so the in, inside if you're listening to this and you're in a female body there's a masculine energy inside of you if you're in a male body there's a feminine energy inside of you and if this energy is repressed or suppressed in any way Sorry. then the the results really is that you're you're not you're attracting the, the projection of what you don't know from inside so eventually you might find this you know, beautiful connection that happens initially with somebody, but then through time, if you don't know yourself as whole, you're eventually going to build layers of, of, of resentment, of frustration with the individual that's representing the, 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 the expression of what you don't know inside. So if you're 
inner union, your masculine and feminine inside of you are not talking and speaking and communicating with each other, then it's extremely difficult to attract and call in a healthy relationship. And this is really a vital piece to the, the work that I do in the world and in understanding masculine feminine dynamics. So when we understand duality, we can then meet at the merging of the heart where we transcend duality and we, we step into divine union. Mm, thank you so much for that. Yeah, that makes my heart so happy. And also just to give you an example, beloveds, um, when a man, for example, does not have his own feminine, he's going to be desperate for somebody else's and his energy is going to be a little bit grabby which as Aaron will, I'm sure will agree, is definitely not conducive to charm somebody when you feel kind of needy for another person's energy. When you are a man and your masculine is repressed, also most likely you will be kind of attracting females that are going to start kind of uh, dominating you. And you might not love that or want that. If you're a woman and your feminine is repressed, it's going to be very difficult for you to attract a stand-up, successful powerful man because you have a tendency to stay in your head and be in a friend zone if you're a woman and your masculine is repressed then again you will be relying on somebody else's masculine so when you don't have your own inner protector inside it's going to be kind of difficult for you to really come into an equal evolved partnership with another with with a man so I totally agree that in some way we are attracting what we already have inside. So it's very, very important to have that in the marriage of uh, your masculine and feminine and your masculine has to be in love with your feminine and your feminine has to truly admire and respect your inner masculine. And so that is a beautiful union. All right. Number three, leading with nice girl or nice guy kind of mentality. Aaron, what do you have to say about that? Well, th there's this illusion that we think we want to be, you know, always a nice guy and the nice girl that takes care of things and is, and is compassionate and caring. And those are beautiful attributes to have. But at the same time, if we don't know, like, our kind of wild, crazy one inside, and we're not able to express that, then eventually that nice girl and nice guy hat kind of wears away the attraction. So there's a part of us that both wants to meet someone who, who can compassionately hold us as well as, you know, take us to God and, and to, to ravish us and to consume us, both masculine male bodies and female bodies. And so the, the, when you're leading only with that energy, Sometimes that magnetic part that's like, ooh, what, there, there's no mystery. Like there's an attraction in the mystery. There's a place of, okay, I'm going to be in my space holder that can hear and love everything. But if you're only there and you're not like leading into this, you know, polarized, mysterious connection, which actually creates this erotic charge, then eventually that, that, that's going to block a, a deep chemistry to happen between two. Oh, well said, Aaron. Loved it so much. If I could lick the screen right now, I would. Those words are so precious. You know, uh, and that also reminds me, you know, of how we dance tango. So when we dance, if somebody's hand is like always just nice, there is no tension. To, to hold the dance, to hold the dance, there needs to be this dynamics that, that, that uh, yeah, we are present with each other. We can go this way or that way. Sometimes we can both dominate maybe and, and surrender, but there is a lila between us. There is this incredible inter, inter exchange of all kinds of energies. And that makes it dynamic and exciting in the life. Also nice girl, nice guy means that your boundaries are probably weak and you probably cannot speak about your needs. And what that takes us to is to be taken for granted, number one, sometimes to be cheated on. Number three is that when we repress our real feelings, they you know, don't go anywhere. They just accumulate. And sometimes it results in resentment towards your partner and loss of sexual desire for the partner. So we are all about you know, being, being transparent, being real, being intimate with each other. And, and dropping that, that uh, 
that that nice girl nice guy attitude which is all about getting approval you know from other people and letting other people to be authority on you number four here we come to Aaron's big topic lack of embodiment that is a huge magnetism blocker Aaron what do you have to say about that yeah you know especially we live in a world where a lot of people love to communicate only at the mind level and, you know, communicating at the mind, it can be fun. It's great to have an intellectual match with somebody. But if, the, if you're not able to get under the belly of that, you're not able to get literally out of the mind into the body, into the feeling, into the expression, into the aliveness, into this, you know, magnetic pull that just exudes out to, to dance in the rain and, and to, to sing in the shower and just to be this embodiment of pleasure, of connection, of aliveness, because what's attractive, what people are attracted to is when they see they're like, there's something about that person, they're alive and they're juicy and they're ecstatic, you know, ecstatic, you know, you'll see behind us is ecstatic dating. It's like, how do I be ecstatic in my life and show up with this vibrant feeling of totally alive, fully grounded, but fully in my body. And when I can bring that embodiment into an experience with other, it lights them up to do more of the same. And it's like, oh, we can play together. Oh, this is fun. Yes, I want to play. I want to experience the fullness of life and not just, you know, and this, this, you know, patterning that happens from only being in the mind. So when we get out of the head into the body, there's a whole mystery of connection that happens both in our playful, young, youthful selves, as well as our erotic, you know, enjoyable, juicy, you know, connections that happen in the bedroom as well. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much for that. And also, I want to mention that what's also so exciting about this is that it has nothing to do with your physical age. And it mm. also has nothing to do with how you look physically according to some kind of Barbie index or standard. Embodiment is really about having your spirit penetrate your whole body. It's about that beautiful marriage of your body and your soul. And so a body without the soul is uninteresting, just like a salad without a dressing. And so when there is consciousness in the body. When there is aliveness in the body, that's what makes everything so so divine and so we we just love this work okay number five absolutely i i just want to say three of the the, the sexiest juiciest most alive women i know one just turned 70 one is turning 76 and one is turning 80 this year and they're so alive with life force and sexuality so if you're listening to this whatever your age like this applies to everyone those three women are such a walking example of what's possible in this life around the field of sexuality and embodiment. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for that. I also want to speak to men on that because there is a lot of discrimination happening towards men based on their height, for example. And mm. I personally like feel very passionate against discrimination of any kind, especially this one. And again, when you have that embodiment, your height does not matter. Your age does not matter. How much hair you have on your head does not matter. It's really about that charisma that you exude. Number five, another magnetism blocker is lack of communication skills. All right, Aaron, do you have anything on that? Yeah, our capacity to communicate clearly, efficiently, and effectively, both when we're first meeting, as well as when we're in a second or third date stage, it's like, am I expressing from the eye? Am I expressing from a state of deeply knowing myself? Or am I generalizing because I'm uncomfortable? I see a lot of people, they generalize about topics and conversations. No, it's really sexy is when someone talks about how they're feeling, what's arriving for them, not in like a please help me kind of place where it's like, uh, it's, but like a place of, hey, this is what's happening inside of me. And that requires certain communication skills that not everyone has. And when you can take those communication skills, this is what actually builds safety into deeper relating. It's what helps people want to go to the next step because they know they have someone if shit comes up, they're not just going to run away. They have the skills necessary 
to meet in the place of maybe disagreement and, and whatever may arise. And the truth is, as relationships build, sometimes there's differing opinions. And so being able to have healthy communication skills is necessary to keep and maintain a healthy magnetic polarity inside of relating. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And this also reminds me of communication from the heart, communication from the open heart, because one heart awakens another heart. And when we just stay in the head and again, talk about general things, how was your day? Oh, that was great. You know, my day was great, something like that. That really doesn't make another person feel anything. But when we communicate from the heart, that's when we fall in love. That's when magic happens. That's when miracles happen. And so we're going to give you much more teaching on that, on, on that kind of magnetic communication and special language that evolved people use, as we promised in the beginning. Number six is lack of support. And I just want to say a little bit about that before I, I ask Aaron. So many people uh, find that it is difficult to maintain the faith that it is possible to have those evolved relationships when they are in isolation. And so it is so important for us to support each other, to be in communities, to be in training programs, to be in spaces where we can empower each other. Because the truth is, beloveds, when we get together, our power and our consciousness, our love multiplies. And so Aaron and I, we experience it so many, many times and different uh, events all over the world all the time. And we know how important it is to have the support. We have something else coming up for you, which is uh, we are going to talk about our ecstatic dating movement which allows people who are involved to really meet each other in a whole new way. And so this is so juicy and so exciting. And if this is the time for you to go, because I understand we're going a little bit over time, I want to tell you that you can book time, book a chat with us, just a 15 minute chat. There is zero obligations, just a chat on the phone with one of our team members to discuss how you can learn all of this. And you can go to the website lubaevans.com slash chat, and you can set an appointment with us where you're going to find out about your own blocks of magnetism. And you can also start discovering your own magnetic superpower. You can also discover what could be the next step for you to start creating that incredible, inspiring partnership to be a part of the love revolution, the part of ecstatic dating, and a part of the army of angels and army of people who are not going to settle for us, who are going to take nothing but absolute, amazing, beautiful, extraordinary love, and who are the guardians of love on, on this planet. So lubaevans.com slash chat, go ahead and um, book a 15 minute call with us and we'll see if we can help. Most likely we can. And I want to tell you that we are only going to uh, give 15 of those calls because we just add capacity this week. So please go ahead. There are many people who are watching this and we would love for you to have this opportunity to talk about yourself, the best 15 minutes you can spend. Yeah, I, I think there's a humility and a humbleness that comes when we're consciously open to seeking support, especially when it comes in the place of love and relationships because the reality not i don't know almost any people that had healthy examples of relating at a young age or that was something that they learned when they were in primary school so you know the place of like learning what might you might not know you might have had aspects of of, of having flavors of it but when you can surrender into different containers and groups and spaces where you can receive support, you can, you know, potentially even support others along the way, but you're open to be a, being able to receive feedback for what's not working in your life. And if you're listening right now and you're realizing, ah, maybe my world of relating and dating isn't necessarily working to the degree in which I want, then being able to ask for support, it requires a bit of an ego death but it's part of the evolution of who we are as a species to be able to ask for support in that way. Most people in the world, I'll, I'll just uh, reveal that secret to you. 
I'm feeling not good enough to be fully loved or not good enough to charge, for example, for their services or not good enough to go after their biggest dream or not good enough to have it all. So when we do have that magnetism and when we do have this deserving mind, we walk around feeling my presence is a blessing to the people. Why is that? Because I'm the channel of love and light and because I'm working on myself and because I am purifying from negativity and I am dedicated to love. So you become a blessing for people who are around you instead of feeling not good enough. One of the also, um, one of the indications that you might have an undeserving mind is this idea that you have to settle for less. While when you do have a fully deserving mind, the inner alignment is I deserve to love and be loved fully, just the way I am. I am unique. My imperfections are perfect and uh, I am adorable. And so when we start feeling this way, I am adorable, the world starts to conspire to make you feel even more adorable. Very fast, I want to take you through three archetypes of damaged love blueprint. And one of them is a wounded warrior. That's when we say, I don't need anyone. I don't need anything. I am totally okay by myself. Meanwhile, your inner child, your inner boy or inner girl is sitting somewhere and crying all alone while you're creating this armor, this front that, that yeah, I, 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 I can do it all by myself. And this is really not inviting people into your space. The next type is the savior. We talked about it before today, when you're overgiving, overgiving, and there is this vampire who is uh, kind of sucking your energy, and then you feel all disempowered, and then you start developing even more disempowering beliefs. The lonely child, and that comes from childhood trauma. You can see how this girl is, is in the red dress and the red dress symbolizes love. And so maybe you remember this time when you were a small child and just wanted love and wanted to be loved. And meanwhile, there was this whole world of confusing adults, sometimes very hurtful. And so that, that gives us this imprint of being rejected and abandoned. And from those places, we start, we start attracting the same kind of energies. This diagram is about the movement, the evolution of a woman who is moving from princess to the sovereign queen. So on one hand, we have a shadow of the wounded Amazon. Again, and I just talked about it, the wounded Amazon with a shield who is afraid of being vulnerable. And when you're afraid of being vulnerable, that does not inspire love. Okay. Uh, there is a tendency to emasculate men especially if you're a successful woman. So again, if this is one of you, if you feel like that's you, put yes, that's me into the comments. There is also a tendency to be impatient, to force things to happen and to be obsessive. Another shadow of the princess is, again, the savior, feeling not good enough, overgiving, giving more than receiving, being, being uh, afraid to express your truth, having weak boundaries, merging too fast, and oversharing and creating idols just to be disappointed. So that is the shadow of the savior. And in our development, we are moving towards being the sovereign queen, magnetic woman who has deserving mind, who has a balance of giving and receiving, who has adopted herself, who leads with her feminine just because it is so enjoyable and sexy, who holds strong and loving boundaries. Boundaries do not have to be unloving. It could be both strict and loving and who is sexually magnetic and who also designs her relationships based on her vision and her soul mission. So that is kind of like that, that evolution of a woman. Yeah. Because, okay, okay. So now what we've covered is what happens when you're magnetic, what happens when you're not. The reasons why the magnetism can be blocked. Deserving mind, undeserving mind, love blueprint. And we also covered the evolution of a woman from princess to a queen and for a man from prince to the king. Now we are going to go into the bullets and cover everything that we've promised in the very beginning of this webinar. And a lot of it is going to be about more specific techniques, about magnetic communications and um, the language that we use when, when um, we are more conscious and more powerful and more magnetic. 
If you would like to speak about and find out uh, what your magnetism blockers are or uh, what is your magnetic superpower or what it can be and how to meet those of all people, you're welcome to schedule a call with us, lubaevans.com slash chat. And I want to tell you that those 15 minutes will be just luminous, just brilliant. And you're going to enjoy every moment of that. Definitely set a call with us. 15 minutes is something that can absolutely change your life and bring in that incredible partner into your life. So how to cut through a cutthroat competition for that attractive, successful, emotionally available man you want. We know that the way to cut through the competition is to feel that you are not a piece of flesh that is defined by your age or by by amount of money in your bank or by your size, but rather that you are a unique piece of art. And when you are that unique piece of art with with a great spirit, and uh, when you really, really feel that you deserve this love, when you feel adorable, when you feel alive, that is what is going to make you stand out completely. When you communicate in a magnetic way, which is something we'll talk about soon, that also makes you stand out from a pretty boring standard head-to-head, talking heads uh, communication, and it's going to make you absolutely irresistible. Number two, how to turn your gorgeous feminine radiance that, um, that compels intelligent masculine men to eagerly pursue no matter how much you weight, like no matter your weight or how you look. Okay. Uh, When we work with the feminine, we need to look into your relationship with your mother, with your father. We need to look into the history of possibly even your ethnic group or your tribe. Like what were those ideas about the feminine that you received? Sometimes a woman received this uh, message that feminine is weak, or sometimes a woman would receive a message that having sexual desire is shameful or that something is wrong with her body, or that that coming in in your full aliveness and radiance is not safe. So those messages also need to be purged and worked through. Sometimes also we accumulate bitterness, we accumulate grief, we accumulate anger in our body. So we need to re- to, to go through practices which are called emotional release practices, which by the way, Aaron and I just co-led in, in, in Spain recently, Um, And you really need to work through the body in order to liberate the body from all of those memories uh, and to let the body become new, let the body become receptive to love. And so when that those things happen, so first of all, the disempowering beliefs go away, negative self-talk goes away, the body releases its memories. It's really which are not conducive. The emotions are being released and you are reborn and you get rid of toxicity in your life, that's when that inner lover comes out and starts to shine. And the truth is, I can tell you, I also work with men and uh, what they tell me is that they are attracted. What's the most attractive thing in a woman? And you, I mean, I, I, I'm sure that, that, that some people think, oh my God, maybe it's a breast. Oh, oh maybe it's a leg. No, you know what it is? It's the twinkle in her eye, okay? And the twinkle in her eye <laughs> is her spirit. Is her aliveness. The three traits that make an evolved man decide that you as a woman can be a great partner for him so that he courts you and commits to you, giving you what you deserve. One, you yourself have a very like uh, love and respect and appreciation for yourself. Um, that's a, a really beautiful, sexy quality to sometimes you know, for me, one of the things that I I actually get really turned on by is when I see a woman that's been just like, has this deep inner love for exactly who she is and is unapologetically like authentic. And and that, that quality for me is like, I can lean into that because I know who she is and I, and, and I celebrate that she's able to you know, stand in the world on our own two feet and and be strong and be clear because then we can meet together, but isn't doing it in a way that's trying to overpower me. She's not doing it in a way that's like, oh, I need to show who the real alpha is in this relationship. That's just like, no, thanks. Doing it in the way because she's being, again, 
100% healthy and strong in who she is. And the, the third one that's a, a necessity is that she has a healthy, mature, emotional body. Meaning when upset happens in her, you know, there aren't, you know, dishes and things being thrown at me. Uh, a lot of women actually are afraid to express their real needs or real feelings. Uh, they're afraid that they're going to seem needy. So we have an incredible method for that, which we call vulnerable share, which is something that you can learn, you know, when you study with us which uh, allows you to fully, truly, deeply express your real authentic feelings and your needs. And at the same time, only to get closer with the partner, just to establish even more intimacy. Okay, how to go on the first date in a way that makes a man enraptured and captivated by your presence and how to make commitment in the natural easy thing. Okay, so let's first talk about how to glow on the first date, how to glow in general. And here, maybe I can also right away talk about that special language that of all people use and um, how do we come in, how do we come in and how do we meet each other? How do we create the sacred meeting which enlightens everyone, which just brings in more light, whether this person is a match for you or not. So the first thing, the first thing about this special language, it's a language of presence. And what it means is that when we are with each other, we're not looking at the cell phone, we're not thinking about something else, we are fully present with each other, with our breath, we're present with our body, and we are definitely present with, with the person that we are talking with. Not only we're present in our mind, but we're also present in our heart, and we come from the place of unconditional love for every being, including this being, and also we come from a place of deep understanding that we are on the same path. And our path, beloved, is the path of oneness. That's why we are the soul family. We are not here. We didn't come together to take from each other. We didn't come together to overpower each other. We have the common goal and our common goal is love. So when we come from that place, that's when the miracle of meeting each other soul to soul happens. Uh, the, the glowing aspect that a woman can bring in is when she's in her divine feminine radiance, when she's just the embodiment of, of just of radiance that exudes from within her. It's a place where she's in her fluidity, she's in her naturalness, there's a, there's a curiosity, there's an aliveness that's vibrating inside. It's what attracts men who don't really know as much of that feminine energy inside of themselves, they're attracted to that glowing, vibrant, alive feminine, because, you know, th there's a part of them that's like, oh, I don't know that in me. I want to see that in, in, in them. And then they see it and there's an attractiveness and there's this enrapture. It's like, ah, I don't know what it is about you, but I, I just want to, I just want to spend time with you, <laughs> you know, and there's a beauty to that, you know, and, and, Unfortunately and unfortunately, sometimes that glow is utilized in manipulative nature with men, and that's where it turns into the shadow. So I want to feel that glow, but I want to feel that glow not in the sense of a woman's just doing that so she can get something from me. When I feel that, I'm like, oh, I don't, I, I want to feel that because she's so in love with who she is and how she celebrates her energy in the world and the, the, the radiance that exudes from her heart, you know, in a tantric perspective, the, the positive pull from the heart chakra for a woman is, is, is that's her positive pull. It's from her breasts. It's from her, it's from that part that just walks into the room and says, Hey, see me, I'm here. It's like, yeah, you are. Oh, I'm excited now. This is beautiful. And there's an attractiveness to that. Like, don't shy away. I see this whole thing, of, you know, and I get it. Like, with me too, with, you know, women feeling like they're suppressed and oppressed and they're abused and they, they can't bring that energy. But this, the, the tying connection to this is that when you're in your glowing energy, and if, if a man meets you at any level of, of, of being you know, not abusive, but not respecting that, that's when you pull out your masculine sword and you say, fuck off, that's not welcome here. And you have very clear boundaries. So then your glow 
isn't dependent upon how it's received by the external masculine. Your glow is an internal game that's being expressed because you know your own inner union from within. And then there's like, there's space. I can lean into that because I'm not needing to be some man that is having all these expectations of who I need to be rather than, oh, we can co-create eternity. We can co-create existence together. Thank you so much for that. And that leads us also into the next question about commitment. Um, and I just want to add uh, just a little bit on top of just some a little bit of fairy juju dust on what Aaron said so eloquently is that when we come in from pleasure, not from pressure. And so when a woman comes in from that place, from the place of now, from the place of breathing, from the place of feeling pleasurable in who she is, that is very magnetic. And that is what attracts so much. Because it's also that mystery, uh, women, that you have, that mysterious connection to your own raw nature. And men want to know it. They want to go deeper with that. So as we flow into the topic of commitment, I loved what Aaron uh, said, co-create eternity together. Because the truth is, the question that, we, that, that arises right now for many people who you know, don't have to depend on another person financially, very often... Is like, what are we about? Why, why, why should we be together? What, what is this about? We don't have to be relying on each other financially pretty much anymore. So, and obviously being together uh, most likely will require some kind of compromises, some kind of negotiations. So the benefit of that and the sense of that has to be much bigger and it has to be obvious. And the question is, again, starts from what we talked about in the beginning. What are we co-creating? Why does it make sense for the universe, for us to be together? And our clients are co-creating all kinds of things, maybe doing fundraising together, maybe creating events together, maybe building a beautiful house to invite guests into, maybe co-creating music, whatever that is. When that is happening and that becomes this force of cohesiveness between people and it just becomes obvious yeah of course we're committed we have this whole thing the whole universe that we're building we we have so much to share it just makes sense for us to be together and Aaron what is what is your feeling about this how to make a commitment natural easy transitioning into a lifelong partnership well the, the this is um I'd say this is a, a, a bonus special tip that I think when women can understand this piece, everything changes. So for a man, for I think for a lot of beings, the, the place of the masculine, not all of us, tends to be a bit more of the freedom lover. There's a ma the masculine energy loves the many, loves the many, you know, whether it's monogamy, polyamory, whatever it is, there's still an energy of the many. The feminine energy really loves the commitment, the, the coming together, the lifelong partnership and all of that. And so for what women to understand is for a man to transition into that lifelong partnership, what's a necessity is that a part of you actually is courting his feminine energy more than his masculine energy. Because if that feminine energy in the man feels seen, heard, validated, and recognized, then she's like, oh my God, I'm seen. And I really want to be in this relationship because this is where I can find and experience deeper love. So this is a little subtle nuance inside of this. And people listening may or may not get this, but if you really want that lifelong partnership and committed relationship connection, that comes from really the, 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 the feminine kind of nurturing body that just wants to huddle down and be with one. Like if I feel into my own inner union, my, my masculine is a freedom loving uh, explorer of the world that teaches globally. My feminine just wants to be on land and make babies and, and, and build gardens. You know, that's where she's happy. So I know for myself and the partnership that I'm drawing in, like I'm being present to both of that and really where deep uh, committed relationship and it happened in my last relationship, which was beautiful. It was really from a place of her, my partner at the time, meeting and, and celebrating and, and, and meeting that feminine energy and saying, you're welcome here as well. And then it was like, oh, I could relax into that space. 
So if you haven't yet set the, the chat with us, um, I want to just go over some things that might be going through your head. I'm too busy. I'm too old. I'm overweight. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I lost sexual desire. I feel completely invisible. And I'm not sure if I even want a partner. So I just want to tell you that we had people who came in who are CEOs of gigantic corporations. They don't have time. Our techniques are so fast, so cathartic. We are so used to working in cathartic space that the transformation that we bring in is really immediate. And Honestly, you know, we don't have a license to lose as therapists. So we can, we can really come in. We can really come in with very powerful, strong, strong practices that will allow you to become the most magnetic version of yourself really, really fast. Usually like in our programs on week two, and just like Aaron was talking about he, his clients, transformation already happens and you start seeing a different reaction from the world. And um if I, I'm too old, we already talked about that, that uh, at 70, 75, 80, you can be so vibrant, like an old wine, you know, really, it's, it's not about how old you are, it's about how much you have left of vibrant life, okay, so not just how much you have left, but how much you have left of vibrancy, and sometimes an 80-year-old person can be so much more vibrant than a 20-year-old, honestly, and I know some people like that too, I'm overweight, okay, so maybe that is something that you love maybe that is something that is protecting you uh, based on some kind of other beliefs or patterns uncovering your inner lover is something that happens in all of our coaching and programs and sometimes and it happens in our work and I'm going to show you somebody who actually lost weight during this whole transformation because you start loving yourself so in our programs, we have a slogan, love it or fix it. And so you will either love it and fall in love with all of you, or you're going to be empowered to fix it. I live in the middle of nowhere. All right. We have events everywhere. I lost sexual desire. Okay. Should I say it will come back? Most likely. Most likely it will come back. When you see so many juicy, uh, sexy souls and, uh, you know, passing on this initiation to each other, it's, and you come into embodied practices and unlock your shame, unlock stagnant energies, release any kind of sh sexual shame, most likely you will come back to the sexual desire. I feel invisible. We already addressed that. So start feeling visible, feeling magnetic. I'm not sure if I even want a partner. Well, again, when you have good boundaries, strong vision, you can really design the kind of relationship that you want. It doesn't have to be a conventional relationship. Some of our, our people have different types of creating creative forms of different relationships okay so we can also discuss that so there are some people here who acquired the feminine magnetism those are specifically for the feminine who um got amazing great partners and i'm very very happy with each other let me see like i think oh, okay by the way this this one this one example how one woman like really you know uncovered her inner lover in, in the program and got married to a guy that she calls her rock um this is a woman who went from being with attracting narcissists to an incredible hot passionate partnerships when these guys are creating music events and this guy's from cuba so they they are organizing cuban musicians and um having so much fun for the first time in her life and there are so so many by the way the, the, this woman is also of, of interesting age and look at her and how she changed and her magnetism just skyrocketed and she's looking you know um as marilyn monroe once she acquired that feminine magnetism and had the hottest you know time and the best sex in her life if you would like to speak about and find out uh what your magnetism blockers are or uh, what is your magnetic superpower or what it can be and how to meet those of all people, you're welcome to schedule a call with us, lubaevans.com slash chat. And I want to tell you that those 15 minutes will be just luminous, just brilliant. And you're going to enjoy every moment of that. Definitely set a call with us. 15 minutes is something that can absolutely change your life and bring in that incredible partner into your life. So let's talk for a moment about ecstatic dating movement. An ecstatic dating movement originated from really, really deeply knowing, working with people so much and knowing how difficult it is and how challenging it is to meet people on your level, people who are into growth, people who want to take responsibility for their lives, their destiny, their feelings, people who are willing to open up to 
to learn how to come into intimacy, how to become those passion catalysts for each other, how to be on purpose, how to co-create together. So, you know, the truth is, this is kind of like this spiritual royal crown of the world. And it's hard to go on Tinder or to, to go on Match or to go whatever app and just find people like that. So that created an idea to, to, to bring this gift to the world, which is the ecstatic dating movement. And ecstatic dating movement is about local events which are coming into different cities as well as retreats and international retreats um, that, that we are holding for people like that who want to meet each other from this hard space and who want to also show up in different aspects of themselves and to really get curious and to really know each other so much deeper than you can know each other on some awkward blind date. And so some of the techniques that we use is to show up in your royalty, show up in your masculine, show up in your feminine, so show up in, as a sexy soul, show up in, actually even as your inner child or as your shadow. And so we have this amazing practices that allow people to, to, to see each other and to interact and play with each other in this sacred space. And so if you're interested to learn how it can work for you again, set a conversation with us, lubevans.com slash chat. So let's talk for a moment about ecstatic dating movement. An ecstatic dating movement originated from really, really deeply knowing, working with people so much and knowing how difficult it is and how challenging it is to meet people on your level, people who are into growth, people who want to take responsibility for their lives, their destiny, their feelings, people who are willing to open up to to learn how to come into intimacy, how to become those passion catalysts for each other, how to be on purpose, how to co-create together. So, you know, the truth is, this is kind of like this spiritual royal crown of the world. And it's hard to go on Tinder or to, to go on Match or to go whatever app and just find people like that. So that created an idea to, to, to bring this gift to the world, which is the ecstatic dating movement. And ecstatic dating movement is about local events which are coming into different cities as well as retreats and international retreats um, that, that we are holding for people like that who want to meet each other from this hard space and who want to also show up in different aspects of themselves and to really get curious and to really know each other so much deeper than you can know each other on some awkward blind date. And so some of the techniques that we use is to show up in your royalty, show up in your masculine, show up in your feminine, so show up in, as a sexy soul, show up in, actually even as your inner child or as your shadow. And so we have this amazing practices that allow people to, to, to see each other and to interact and play with each other in this sacred space. And so if you're interested to learn how it can work for you again, set a conversation with us, lubevans.com slash chat. So Aaron, thank you so much for this, um, for this incredible time and uh, so many insights and um, this plethora of wisdom and incredible energy that you bring in. Thank you for all your wisdom and your gifts and all the work you're doing on this planet. Very grateful for you. And I'm, I'm very excited excited to co-create with you. Thank you, beloveds, for your time. Hopefully you gained some uh, insight and wisdom from our masterclass and journey here tonight and look forward to hearing you, hearing from you in the future. Thank you so much.